I'm Will Aubrey. It's time for another edition of the Improbability Engine, and my buddy Joe Darnell is here, and we start, as always, with our moment of what? Yeah, Will, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty important day that I want to put this out there. It's your birthday, and more importantly, sorry, no offense, it's towel day. Yes, it is. <laughs> You've got to make sure we talk about that, and we'll go into that later on, but my moment of what comes from the great country of Germany where they put in a four mile pipeline. Now that's not crazy. The United States has thousands of miles of pipeline, but what is it carrying in Germany? And the answer is beer. beer. Why else wouldn't bang. you have a beer it pipeline in Germany? I thought that was the greatest thing since last. I was like, that's awesome. But you can't have one of those in the United States because frankly, somebody would go and put a leak in it and try to siphon off some of their own. I know this for a fact. It would have to happen. Speaking of a leak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was at the Kentucky Center to see Beautiful, the Carol King musical, with my lovely wife and my dear friend Becky. And I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. This, before the show. So I go to the men's room. And Good. somebody had just walked out. And um, now, the sign that said men's was on what appeared to be a wall. And then there was a door next to it. One problem. That door opened outward but had no handle to pull it out. And so I'm standing there and I'm just, how, I how, how am I going to get in? What a terrible in? idea. Right, I'm with you. And then this guy walks up, grins at me pushes what appeared to be the wall. It turns out it was part of the door. It was another, <laughs> another door, and it opens. And I said, I'm so glad you came along. <laughs> oh. Will, that reminds me of a far side where the, uh, the boy's trying to get into the school for the gifted by pulling, and it's a push door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. So that was your moment. Well, I, you know, it could be worse. He, he, he could have waited another half an hour. <laughs> that would have been much worse. All right, so this is a potpourri episode for sports. Uh, lots of little stuff going on. Us some, doing some house cleaning, uh, mentioning some of the bigger stories that are going through. Um, let's start with the elephant in the room. Valparaiso finally accepts their invitation to the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, this has been the most non-surprising part of this entire this entire setup uh they their baseball team was eliminated in the horizon tournament and uh that finished all of their postseason appearances for the year uh which means now that they can kind of move into that that missouri valley conference slot uh it broke before we came on uh, wish nothing but the best for our friends over at valpo uh during this this whole thing we've had some really great contact with some valpo fans and uh, there really is i i truly believe there's a kinship between uh, murray state and valparaiso basketball um they're they're two programs that have had similar runs of success um i've always pulled for valpo always i mean they you know they're they're defined oftentimes in the national media by a shot um it's it's funny how the programs are much larger than that and uh, much more important than that and so we wish them nothing but the best and we hope that here in the next year or so maybe just maybe there will be some uh some news from the murray state front on that alas nothing right now what else is going on will well, uh, you know, Murray State thought that they had completed their recruiting yep, and that all their scholarships were being used. And then word comes out yesterday or the day before that Jeremy Grace is transferring. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy Grace, he showed some signs of being really good. Uh, came, came in as a... as Was supposed to be a shooter. Was supposed to be a shooter um, and, and did hit some shots. But that transition to D1 is always tough. I don't care who you are or how good you are. You know, everybody talks about the, the the number one the number one person who proves the rule is possibly the only guy who can be held up as an exception, and that's Cameron Payne. Um, people forget that the first semester for Cameron Payne was not always the best. Now he showed signs of being all world, but even his first game against Valparaiso scored 23 points, but took you know. I think it was. I think he's something like six of twenty-six. Yeah, or something you know, just from the horrible. field. Just not not very good. And and there were you know that's all part of that learning process. And for Jeremy Grace, um, 
you know, didn't didn't see a whole lot of time in the second semester. Um, didn't didn't force the issue. It seems like he didn't push himself into the into the starting lineup, which is what you want to see on a team that's desperate for a shooter. You expect someone to kind of push themselves into that role and make it where the coach can't say no. Uh, and and uh, so we wish him the best. He's on his way out. Uh, um, he he'll have a red shirt year and then have two left, which you know for him that's. That's still very good. It makes him a, a high pro, a, a high quality tra transfer if someone was willing to pick him up. Uh, let's see. The next big story: uh, Murray State baseball won his first game in the Ohio Valley Conference tournament. Uh, a, actually, a big game against Belmont, six to three. If I read the release correctly, it was their first win in the tournament in seven years. Yep, and a fantastic showing. Uh, really doing it the way that they've won games all year uh, with offense they've got I think five or six guys batting over 300 and you know four four double digit home run hitters uh, you know it's it's one of those where you're starting to see signs of life and starting to rebuild and uh, uh, just uh, they, they had a, a rookie of the year freshman of the year for the OVC this year and uh, you know really an impressive year so far and it continues on for them to win the thing they're going to have to get good pitching, and that's where they've had problems this year. The last time I looked, the best ERA under the, uh, the best ERA on the team was nearly five. Yeah, and it's just difficult to win consistently when your pitching is like that. Absolutely. Uh, but now baseball is a fickle game. I mean, it's one of those where you go on a run, you go on a streak. And somehow you just do better than than what you should. I always think back to the 2006 uh, St. Louis Cardinals and <laughs> them riding Jeff Weaver, who was really not a great pitcher. I mean, he he had an ERA in the regular season of over five. It was just it was kind of nasty. They sneak into the wild card spot and go on to win the World Series. So I mean, it is doable. It is possible. It will take um, some guys playing above themselves, above what they've done this season. Uh, but the talent's there. I mean, they've got good coaching. They got talent. And anytime you have talent, you got a chance. Murray State softball under Coach Kara Amundsen, who's just a terrific coach and fantastic, coach. great person, by the way. Fantastic coach. Uh, Kara uh, got them into the National Invitational Softball Tournament, where they beat Michigan State. <laughs> Absolutely. And hey, anytime you get a win over somebody like Michigan State, that's something to crow about. Uh, They've since been eliminated, but they had a terrific year and looked like at one time they were going to be a serious threat to win the OVC tournament. Uh, but Mason Robinson just somehow went the wrong direction at the end of the year and where she had been almost unhittable at times. Well, she was unhittable for two straight games. Yeah, for she two had, games out of three, she had two perfect games. Two perfect games. <laughs> and, and then suddenly she can't get anybody out. Well, and, and that's that happens. And especially at the end of the year, you deal with fatigue. Uh, you deal with some of the things that go on. Uh, and sometimes it's just bad luck. You know, the other, the other people who are playing against you, they're on scholarship too. They're, they're quality athletes. But uh, good, good job for, for Coach Amison to, to go through and, and take a team that lost in the OVC tournament and make them a threat in that, that, in, that invitational tournament. That's a great thing. And honestly... The sky's the limit for this team. An interesting note about Kara, one of her ancestors mm -hmm. was Roald Amundsen, who was the first man to reach the South Pole. Really? Yes. Well, then she's no she's no stranger. Her family is no stranger to great feats. So we look forward to seeing how she does after this. Um, moving on to high school sports, it was a, a good day this past week for Laker baseball and softball fans as both the Laker baseball team and the Laker softball team won the district championship and are moving on to the regionals. What a fantastic job done. You know, the coaching staff, the players, uh, tip your cap to them. For the baseball team, they went up against the number one pitcher in the district and one of the best pitchers in the state in J.C. Goins from Marshall County. And not only did they get to him early and often, they actually got him out of the game. And this is a team that in Callaway that had just played the night before. They had pitched – their one, their starter, in the first game, and we're coming in with their second. And here you have arrested Marshall County, and Callaway was just able to take it to him. Tip the cap to Travis Turner. Well done. 
Amen to that. And Troy Webb, the coach of the softball team, uh, he got it done as well. Now, both teams advanced to the regional tournament, where at least for the girls, uh, it's going to be tougher because it McCracken be. County is, I mean, before the school was consolidated, Reedland and Lone Oak were two of the softball powers in the first region. And since consolidation, putting those kids together, uh, McCracken County has just been at another level. Yeah, it's it's in, it's incredible and impressive to me to see what uh, what what that school's been able to do with consolidation. And I know it's an unpopular sentiment, but I've often thought about what would happen if Murray and Callaway were to consolidate. Um, I actually had that uh, that same conversation with the. Uh, the late Joey Fosco, who was dead set against consolidation. He hated the idea of consolidation, and he had a really good reason for it. And Joey was a bright guy. He knew, ex I mean, he understood a lot of what was going on, and he said it's access. You know, if, if you have three schools and three teams, then you've got three times as, three many, times kids. as many kids playing and participating. And he's right. Um, but you can see where the argument for consolidation and success comes in. If you can take Lone Oak, Reedland, and Heath and take the best players from each of those pools, you can really build something fantastic uh, just by doing it. And I've often thought about that with Callaway and Murray. Yeah, it just depends on what you value the most. Uh, I was on the seventh grade basketball team where I went to school, and then they consolidated the schools. And in eighth grade, I wasn't good enough to make the basketball team. Right. So... Uh, at that point, I thought consolidation was really a horrible <laughs> idea. Something from the bowels of Hades. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. And, and you know, honestly, it's one of those discussions that has kind of been bandied about before, and there are so many moving parts to it. I mean, it really is difficult to kind of to kind of get a grasp on it, but uh, just something to kind of think about as we go forward, especially watching our Lakers and Lady Lakers participate in the regional tournament. And we've got a new hire at Marshall County High School, taking over the girls team there, Martin Clapp. He's the former head coach of the women's team at the University of Louisville, led them to the NCAA tournament. He was very successful there. <laughs> and uh, really, it's it's kind of an amazing hire. It really is. And you came up with a good analogy for it. Well, it reminds me a lot of when uh, Ron Green came back to coach at Callaway High School. I mean, Ron Green was an SEC coach of the year, coached Murray State, and took them to from the doldrums to a much higher position and really did wonderful things there. Um, went on to coach at New Orleans and so on and so forth and in the ABA. And then he comes back to coach at Callaway High School. And and you think about the vast amount of knowledge and a basketball mind that, that comes in and is now coaching at the high school level, it's really staggering. Uh, and I think Coach Clapp will do very, very well at Marshall County. And, and honestly, that's only good for the first region. Um, Marshall County under Howard Beth was a juggernaut, and it was difficult to win. It was, but when you did, it got more attention. Those teams were always good. The teams that came out of the first region, you knew were going to challenge for a state championship because the quality of the coaching at every school, and especially Marshall County, was there. And so, you know, seeing that from, uh, you know, seeing Marshall County go out and make a home run higher, that tells you something about where they expect to be. Um, I look forward to seeing what the competition looks like in the first region because, frankly, Callaway's on the upswing. They've got great coaching of their own. Murray is kind of resetting, but they've got so much talent. Marshall now has a former college coach as their head coach. There's so much going on in the fourth district in the first region that kind of pivot on this, and it's just an amazing hire. Well done by Marshall County Athletics. Anything else on local athletics? <sighs> You know what? I don't think so. I think we're good right now. Uh, still looking for a, a Murray State assistant coach hire here probably sometime this summer. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens with the, the, last, uh, the last scholarship opening that Murray State has. I don't think that they're going to fill it just to fill it. It'll have to be somebody who comes in and does something, you know, brings something amazing. I personally would think that they're going to go for a transfer, keep it open for a, a Division One transfer that can come in either right before the season or even perhaps one semester in, uh, if it's somebody who can be a program changer, then you've got to kind of, kind of put that in there and, and start thinking about that now. But having that extra scholarship is a fantastic thing to have. It's a good asset. That brings to a close this edition of the Improbability Engine.